Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Rentnarb Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about the comic books I've read and where you can get those comic books. So, let me start up with first, um, Le Fay number four. Le Fay number four here. Le Fay number four uh, came with, actually I think this bookmark came with the uh, last book, but I like the bookmark so much I use it all the time. And, um, let's see here. Came with some trading cards. A lot of trading cards, actually. A tarot card. Ooh, I can't show that because it's not clean for uh, some viewers. There we go. Yeah. Really can't show it without the uh, too much covered up. There's one. It's got some chrome on it. That's pretty cool. That's a trading card. A lot of trading cards. That one's a chrome one as well. That one's a really cool one past cover I think on that one. That one's a really cool one. They're all chrome it looks like. Let's see, make sure they're all clean before I start showing them off. That one's not. That one's okay. There's a Princess Leia one. Well she's, it's Le Fay in Princess Leia clothes. That one's chrome. This one is not chrome, but that one's cool too. There we go. And and that one, not chrome. And some prints too, uh, that came with this book. Let's see, a lot of prints and uh, I got some space on my wall that has been begging for some prints, so that's cool. There's Mer Merlin here, one of the characters from the story. All right, so let's start with some credits on Le Fay 4 here. So Le Fay 4, is created and story by Marcel Dupree and Joshua Metzger. Script by Joshua Metzger. Art by Miguel Angel Ruiz. Colors by Vittorio Aston. And lettered by Mar Marco Della Verde. This is from No Sleep and Evolution Publishing. And yeah, LeFay here is one of my favorite uh, comics to back on Kickstarter. It's got a good storyline and uh, let's see here. So let's show you some cool art here. So this one they're dealing with a uh, thing called an Elder God and that's the first page right there. Pretty cool stuff and basically they've got a baby one and uh, this thing is going to grow up to be a monster and it's going to be controlled by whoever owns it and Merlin's trying to get it and so Le Fay is a private investigator with these uh, witches and they want to get it first but she doesn't quite trust them either with uh, good reason because uh, these witches double cross Le Fay. Anyway, uh, what Le Fay wants to do, she's teamed up with uh, this person who's kind of a park ranger over uh, myth mythical creatures and uh, and she's teamed up with her to try and send it back through a portal to its own realm. So that's the good stuff here. It, yeah, it's it's a really good storyline. Uh, this Le Fay character is, um, as they advertise on the Kickstarters, is a lot like Jessica Jones if Jessica Jones was a fairy and had powers. So really cool stuff. I'm loving it. And uh, really good artwork. The artwork here by, oh man, I said before, um, Miguel Angel, Angel Ruiz is, is just stunning artwork, um, amazing stuff. That's what keeps me coming back every time is the artwork and the story are just freaking amazing. And uh, oh yeah, here we got some bad stuff going on. So yeah, there's this one part here. It, it's a wild ride of a story and at one point we're even, we even have uh, Le Fay on a Pegasus, while the Park Ranger kind of girl is on a Griffin, and Merlin is on a Dragon. They're all, all going at it, fighting each other, and battling to get this, uh, as you can see, this monster creature right there. Can it get it close enough you can see it? Hope. My, it kind of looks fuzzy on my end. I hope it comes across. But yeah, there was this awesome battle in the air with a, uh, with the Dragon, Pegasus, and Griffin. Really good stuff. Loved it. Um, and this book even comes with a uh, a preview of OBS's uh, 
Vampire Soldat, which is a comic that's running on Indiegogo right now. I'll talk about that later in the uh, Kickstarter and campaign corner of my shows. Anyway, um, there was also this here of uh, Lethal Cat, Lethal Challenger's Cat, and I was hoping that when I saw that that there was going to be a preview of that, but all you get is this cover. Man, I'd love to check out that one. That one interested me. I think uh, that one's got an Indiegogo campaign going right now too, which I'll talk about. So yeah, really cool stuff. Really cool artwork in the uh, preview of the Vampire Soul Deck. So yeah, uh, Lafay number four. Really cool stuff. Um, I think Lafay number five is on Kickstarter right now. Not sure if it uh, collected my funds or not. But if I when I get to that, I'll probably mention that more in depth because I don't have the notes right here in front of me. They're in the uh, Kickstarter part of my notes. So that's Lafay number four. Check it out. Really good stuff. Um, look it up. Uh, I will put tags in the uh, on the Twitter side of my uh, posts. Whenever I post it, I always post tons of tags and stuff on Twitter. So you'll be able to find Lafay and all its creators on that. Oh, sorry. Hmm. All right. So yeah, that was Lafay. Next up on my uh, read is Cult Heroes number one. Cult Heroes was awesome. Let me first get a, show you all the extras that came with it. We got a uh, postcard where this person is killing uh, Batman 66. It looks like crazy stuff, but it's a Batman with antlers. I don't know what's going on there. Pretty cool postcard. I love the art style. As you can see, the coloring on this is crazy good. Really, really interesting way to do it. Here's an awesome print too. Like I said, I have a blank space on my wall ready for a bunch of prints and uh, I can't wait to put those up. And I got three stickers from Cult Heroes here. So, you know, I'm always a sucker for the stickers. Love putting them on the boxes that the comics are in. So I have that'll go into uh, onto the lid of my uh, comic box that the Cult Heroes stickers or comics will be in. So cho cool, 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 cool stuff. All right, so Cult Heroes here. Let me give you the credits. All right, so Cult Heroes is written, drawn, everything. Every single part of this book here is done by Raymond Estrada. Written and illustrated, all that fun stuff. I even got a signature in there. That's really cool. Uh, I got this one from Kickstarter. Good stuff. And, uh, yeah, um, so long ago I backed a comic called Shotgun Full of Roses. It did not go to uh, complete funding, and uh, I was bummed about that. But then, I think sometime after that, I started seeing uh, posts about this. And so, yeah, that was good stuff. Alright, let me see. Get here to Cult Heroes. So, um, Cult Heroes right now says the skies are crowded with people in capes. Cult Hero and Razor Blade Mary are on a spree eliminating these heroes. This was 24 pages of awesomeness. Yeah, it, it just blew me away. Um, as you can see from that artwork there, crazy good stuff. Uh, and that's exactly what it is. Um, they're just going from place to place picking off heroes and you get introduced to uh, this girl that can fly and she's being raised on a farm with another person who is a hero. Really, I'm really liking that uh, scenario and stuff. Like I said, the artwork, the coloring on this is amazing. Yeah, I love all the, uh, all the background noise and stuff that uh, Estrada puts into the colors. A lot of grittiness to it kind of makes it look like a screen that's going bad kind of cool stuff to it so uh, cult heroes number two is on Kickstarter right now and uh, I will get to that one when I get to the uh, Kickstarter corner of my episode but I am definitely back in number two because this book was crazy good and uh, yeah what else can I tell you about cult heroes Oh yeah, there's an awesome page of art to check out. Yeah, so Cult Heroes, 
really good start. Uh, it's kind of confusing to see tell what's going on other than uh, there's these two. They're going after uh, heroes one by one and killing them. They just killed a speedster in this one. And uh, the police are investigating, so who knows where it's going to go from there. If uh, any of these heroes are going to survive this. If the detectives are going to get close to them and find them. And uh, yeah, a lot of cool stuff. So Cult Heroes, check that one out. Um, along with Cult Heroes, uh, I also got the uh, digital file to Shotgun Full of Roses. I don't, I don't know if the camera clears in on that one. So Shotgun Full of Roses is about a Bonnie and Clyde kind of thing going on. And this guy's he's not going to make his rent and he happens to stop at a flower shop where he where uh, he runs into a guy and the guy says um, well he take he ends up with a shotgun and it's full of roses and whenever they shoot these roses at people uh, they fall in love and no longer want to fight so they go in and rob a bank or something and everybody in the bank is like here's my wallet take my money all this fun stuff and it was an interesting read really good story the writing on that is amazing and uh, it's very 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 clear to me that uh, Estrada grew as a colorist from this issue of Shotgun Full of Roses to Cult Heroes because I mean they're, while they're both good uh, Cult Heroes has all that greediness that I was talking about that really makes everything pop and uh, jump out at you art style wise and uh, well, the art, uh, that similar art, art style is in Shotgun Full of Roses. It just doesn't have all that background noise added into it like uh, Cult Heroes. So, uh, yeah. Shotgun Full of Roses was a cool um, read and uh, stuff, but I'm really digging this Cult Heroes, and I will continue to follow it and find out where that story goes. Now, next up is... comic called Starlight. Now, Starlight, uh, so far, I think it only came with a bookmark of Starlight. I would love to have some stickers to go onto my comic book boxes, so um, talking to you guys, Starlight, if you uh, have any stickers, th throw them into uh, your add-ons on your Kickstarters and stuff, and I will throw a couple dollars your way to get those stickers. Alright, let me see here. Let's do some credits, get those out of the way. Starlight, Issue 2, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, is written by Travis Webb and Greg Smith, with artist Brett, Weld, Brett Weldell, and uh, edited by David Mayer, and a cover B by Jenna Ayob, which I think I have cover A, apparently. So learn more from, let's see, uh, yep, that's all the credits. Anyway, that's Starlight number two. So where this issue starts off is, uh, all right, first, in the first issue, we got introduced to a reporter and uh, he, he had some, a lead on where these two heroes that were, that were uh, kids had grown up now. And so he's like, he, he was breaking the story on a YouTube show saying, I know where these kids are, and follow me while we go, and he knocks on the door and he says, you guys are the uh, Cosmic Kids, or I can't remember what their names were now. But uh, he's like, I know you guys were these ki kid heroes, and uh, I'm exposing you on camera. And then all of a sudden these aliens pop up, and they kidnap their these kids' mom, and the reporter and everything end up on spaceships, and really cool stuff. Uh, so this whole... Uh, issue takes place with the characters um, pinned to these monolith things uh, with some special handcuff kind of things going on and he's rattling on like she's making a, a squishy noise because she's sucking on a binky and he's like why are you sucking on a binky right now and the brother says oh because she's on drugs and he's like what you took drugs right before being abducted by aliens all this really cool stuff and uh, which I'm not a big fan of uh, taking drugs, but to each their own, right? Anyway, oh, let me cover up that. So this, some cool art. There's a swear word right there. I'm trying to keep it clean for the kids. I love the art style. Good stuff. And uh, 
Oh yeah, there's some cool aliens. This alien's got like eight legs, like a spider, and then these other aliens look like cats. Kind of furries, people dressed up as cats. But they have giant ears like, uh, like Ewoks or Gremlins and stuff. Cool stuff. Anyway, so they're, they're all teasing, the, the, the old brother's teasing the reporter guy like, you thought we were heroes, ma ha ha, while all the while the sister is melting the handcuffs and getting out, because apparently they are the heroes. So he, he was on to something, and then he reveals that he's like, kid, I really don't think you were the heroes. Uh, it's just part of my show where I, I, I surprise the audience, and then I surprise him again by saying, ha, these weren't really the heroes, but he doesn't know that they really are. Cool stuff. Uh, so yeah, this is a good story. I really dig it, and uh, I think the uh, Kickstarter for the next issue is running right now. There's even some cosplayers in some bonus material that have uh, dressed up like the main character. That's, that was a cool idea. I love it. And, uh, and there's some art from other people, fan arts, that did some stuff. So, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And then I also got my name in the thank you page. That's pretty cool. I love it. This is Gary Brantner of Renarb Studios Comics, because that's how I identify myself. And uh, there I am. I love it. Oh, yeah. It's even signed. I love it. Good stuff. So, I think Starlight is on Kickstarter right now when I get to the... Oh, nope. I have the notes for that right here. So, Starlight, a raver superhero trapped in space, 24-page comic book, Transdimensional spider wizard, space pirate cats, and has been heroes. Really cool stuff. A tabloid YouTuber. I said all that. And so the kids are on a mission in space to uh, rescue their mom. This Kickstarter is for issues one through three, which I have just read number two. <clears throat> I'm sure you can get all three issues at the uh, at the catch up tiers and. Um, yeah, I highly, highly recommend it if it's a really good art style, really trippy looking art, obviously, if one of the characters is always tripping. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to see where this goes. Issue 3 is on Kickstarter right now until June 3rd. Check that one out. I will mention that again when it comes to the Kickstarter section. Man, this could be a long episode because I read a lot, and it's been a while since I made an episode, and there's a lot of Kickstarters going out. Next up on the list is a comic called Entity. This is actually a trade, a whole volume. It's a big one. Beautiful cover. Love that stuff. And uh, this one came with some trading cards. Got some a trading card right there. There. These are two main characters. And a business card, it looks like. So it's got their stuff on the back. So, boom. Entity is written by Tyler Carpenter, pencils and inks by Joe Wong, colors and lettering by Tyler Carpenter, the writer, and cover by Tyler Carpenter, the writer, variant cover by Luigi Turiel, which I think this might be the variant cover right here. Pretty cool stuff. I love it. Um, so, uh, one of the reasons I backed this is because this is from a Utah creator, and I'm from Utah, so I like supporting the Utah creators whenever I can. And, uh, let's see here. So, Entity here, it's got a, got an interesting art style. Uh, it kind of threw me a little bit. It was, it's a little rough, and uh, kind of sketchy looking, but then the more you read this story, and... Uh, yeah, like like I said, it's got it's got a rough ink style to it. The, and the longer I read it, uh, I just got into it. It it totally matches the story, which was tell, told really well, and uh, and uh, ended up leaving me pretty satisfied with the way everything worked, um, plot wise and uh, stuff. So let me tell you what the story is about. It, this story is about a girl, she's on a space station, and I think her name was Cassandra? Camille. Her name is Camille. She's on a space station, and uh, she's 
everything she's taught is from the computer. It makes her watch videos and learn how to interact with people, even though she has no interaction with people at all, just AI uh, computers here. And one day, this guy shows up, and er her whole world is thrown for her loop. Uh, the robots that are taking care of her start shooting at them, so they get in a ship, escape, they end up on Earth, and Earth is got zombies on it, and other soldiers who are fighting to survive. And, yeah, the story just gets really cooler from there. Um, a lot of surprises, like you find out some of the people on Earth are actually not people at all, but they are also robots. And then they go... They get on another jet, go to space, and find another planet. And there they find some uh, other people they interact with. They find out those are robots. Yeah, like I said, I just kept reading this, and like I, I thought I knew what was going on, but I had no idea what was going on this whole time in a good way. And uh, it was a very good, entertaining read, um, entertaining art style, everything like that. And the uh, back matter material... It was really cool learning how uh, Tyler came up with the story, how he uh, got in touch with the artist, Joe Wong, and from there everything, like, just basic general information on how the comic was created, how everything went, and I enjoyed it. Really cool stuff from Tyler Carpenter and Joe Wong. Oh, yeah. There was, I just noticed that, too. I like that when you guys do that, too. Uh, put in a credits page with uh, pictures of each of you too. That's really cool stuff. So I will put information on Entity on uh, the show notes and on the Twitter and tag everybody appropriately, whatever that I have tags for, and uh, show you where you can get those. So Entity, I think I found this one on Indiegogo, which is, I know I don't back a lot of things on Indiegogo, but uh, I remember coming across the... Uh, like I said, he, he was a Utah creator, so I chipped in, helped out fellow Utah creators, kind of help local, you know, all that fun stuff. So, love that, and um, Entity. It was a good read, really cool art style, and uh, just fun all through the whole thing. And next up on the list, not, not independent, this is Amazing Spider-Man Volume 8, but, you know, I read, I read all sorts of stuff, so whatever. Um, so yeah, Amazing Spider-Man here. Let's find the credits page. Amazing Spider-Man here is penciled by Ryan Otley and Yvonne Coelho with Zay Carlos, Inkers, Cliff Rathburn, and Ryan Otley. And other colorists, Nathan Fairbain and D. Cuniv, Brian Reber and Pete... Pantazis. And this is written by Nick Spencer through the whole thing. So, awesome stuff. Lettered by JC's Joe Caramanga. And edited by Nick Lowe. Associate editor Kathleen Wisniewski. Wow, Marvel. They always have a lot of credits. A lot more credits than the uh, indie stuff. But, really cool stuff. I'm... Um, yeah, I, I'm a Spider-Man fan, but only when my uh, favorite writers or artists are on Spider-Man. And Ryan Otley is one of my favorite artists. So I'm going to... Uh, I am going to grab Spider-Man as long as he's drawing it. That's how it is. Um, yeah, I, I, most of the Spider-Mans I have in my box are uh, Rick Leonardi and John Romita Jr. stuff, Lee, Lee, Lee Weeks. Oh, you know... Random stuff like that. Peter David, whenever Peter David writes Spider-Man, I'm all over that. Um, yeah, there's not really a whole lot of Ryan Otley in here, but it was a good read. Um, so Spider-Man has to deal with a lot of random stuff in this issue. That's how it's been with this uh, writer, Nick Spencer. He just kind of, he's just kind of throwing out uh, any kind of Spider-Man story that he's always ever wanted to read. Um, you could kind of see that in the storytelling with, uh, he's dealing with, uh, school and science projects and the Silver Sable, Chameleon, Dr. Doom, and in the middle of all this, wait, 
I think those are the notes for another Spider-Man. Because uh, this says that he has to deal with Spider-Man 2099. So yeah, that was the last issue. In this one, uh, he sits down and has an uh, interview with J. Jonah Jameson, who is, in this wor current version of Spider-Man, uh, runs a podcast. And so he sits down with J. Jonah Jameson, and talks about Spider-Man, and what it's like being Spider-Man, and how he's turned from saying Spider-Man's a menace to kind of being on Spider-Man's side, and they get in a little fight over something. It's pretty cool. It was a good read. I I had a good time with it, and uh, yeah, the Ryan Otley stuff deals with a, uh, what is this guy? I lost it. Uh, a weird monster thing named Gog, and where Gog come from. Basically, Gog is a tiny little monkey pet, and when he's angry, he gets huge, and so he has to be calmed down and shrunk down to size. But yeah, Ryan Otley excels in drawing aliens. Freaking love that stuff. And uh, yeah, good stuff. So um, Craven the Hunter finds him, raises him to be a bad thing. And Spider-Man gets calms him down. Makes Grog normal again. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, really good stuff from Spider-Man, you know. Typical Marvel Spider-Man stuff. And, um, yeah, now we are on to the mailbox section of my... And this is where I just show you all the stuff I got in my mailbox. One of my things that I got in the mailbox this week, I'm really happy with, you know, the uh, Invincible show was really popular for a couple weeks because it was on the Amazon. And so I got an email that saying uh, a bunch of Skybound and... Invincible stuff was on sale, so I got me an Invincible shirt. Shirt? Shirt. <laughs> I got me an Invincible shirt. It's the cosplay version. So now I can go to sh go to work dressed up as Invincible, and no one has any idea what I what it is, because I ask a lot of people, are you guys watching Invincible? And no. Not a lot of comic book love at the place where I live, work, and um, I'm kind of in a huge minority there as far as comic book collecting goes. But hey, I love it. One of the best things is when you're uh, dressed up as something like uh, Invincible or Multiple Man or Spider-Man 2099 and someone recognizes you in the shirt, I have an instant friend because I'm like, dude, you know who uh, Multiple Man is? We're best friends. Anyway, what else I got in the mail? I got Silver, Volume 2. Uh, this is one that's been on my um, checklist forever that I've been needing to get. I read Silver Volume 1 a long time ago. That's a weird way to do a cover. It's kind of like a dust jacket, but it doesn't come off like a dust jacket. It just flaps open. Anyway, Silver, it's good stuff. It's uh, written by Stephen Frank, who uh, you may know from the uh, Palomino that I read a couple weeks ago. So, really good art. Kind of a... Stephen Frank has a Tim Sale kind of... Um, look to his artwork and uh, I can't wait to uh, dive into that. He does black, this silver is a black and white vampire comic. And uh, yeah, I, I remember I got volume one way, way, way back during the first day um, Salt Lake Comic Con, we had, they had a table with Stephen Frank at it. And so I picked up silver volume one and I think, uh, yeah, I was hooked. And it's been on my checklist forever. I got Volume 4 in the uh, Palomino Kickstarter, and uh, so now I just got to fill in the gaps, get numbers uh, 3, and whatever comes after 4, so that I can read those. So, yay, now I got number 2, I can throw in the read pile, finally get to that one, put my mail over here. I also got Starside in the mail, Starside number 4 we're on. I think there's a Kickstarter for Starside going right now, so i got to throw that into the read pile really soon. Do a review on that, let you know about that. Starside's a good story. Uh, this kid ends up in space trying to find his sister. Oh, this one came with a lot of stickers and stuff, too. Love it. Love you guys over at Starside. And so, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of confusing, Starlight and Starside. Doing Kickstarters always at the same time, but, you know. Planer Jane here. I got Planer Jane 1 and 2 from Kickstarter in the mail. 
And uh, these are black, white, and red comics. Can't wait to bust into those. They came with some uh, button pins. And I got some stickers. This is Planer Jane and Broken Smiley Face, I think. Broken Face is the name of the company that makes uh, Planer Jane. So that's cool. Got me a Broken Face and a Planer Jane sticker to throw on my box. Along with uh, some postcards to put up in my space. Good stuff. Oh, see? Broken Face comics right there. That's pretty cool. I like that. It's kind of like a demented rent narb. So those are some pretty cool postcards. It got me a, two giant prints that are identical. I wonder if that was an accident. But those will go up in my uh, blank space on my wall here. Then I got Vampire Bloodlines. Is that right? Yeah, I've been saying it wrong on Twitter, so... I gotta get it correct this time. Vampire Bloodlines here. It also comes with some stickers, trading cards, a cosplay. As you can see, it has a cosplay uh, cover from Ivy Cosplay. I love it. Um, and I love how they do the small size. See, this bag and board is from a regular size comic. And they do a little bit smaller. Really cool, though. Uh, Bl Vampire Bloodlines. I love It's kind of cool to do something different once in a while. And I love that they do it. Oh, and I got an autographed uh, cosplay print right here. So that's pretty cool. Um, I know the one in the black is Ivy Cosplay. I'm not sure who who is in the red, though. I'll have to look that one up. So that's the end of the mailbox section. Now we are on to the campaign corner of the show. Campaign corner is where I talk about all the Kickstarters and Indiegogos that are running right now and where you can find those and, I, and then I'll show, I'll throw links to every one of those in, uh, in my Twitters. Sorry, I do it in Facebook also, but man, that's just too much work. And ain't nobody got time for that. Alright, so show notes. Let's see here. What day is it? Today is the 19th, so Smokeweed See the Future is past. I'm sorry if you missed out on that one because it's from the Destiny New York storyline. And uh, yeah, you should have backed it, even without me telling you to. Glenn in Monsterland is on uh, Indiegogo right now. It is 48 pages of All Ages Fun, comedy adventure about a gang of monsters who rebel against their masters. Glynn is an apprentice witch, um, and she's left in a dungeon to rot after she defies her mentor. So, it, from what I read of the preview, because they have a preview on the Indiegogo page, it, it was fun stuff. Uh, a lot of, lot of, it, it, reading it made me feel like I, I was watching a Saturday morning cartoon. It's really cool stuff, and uh, really gets you into it. It's going to be 52 pages of comic book after extras. So it's 48 pages of comic book and 52 after. So check it out. Really good stuff uh, with that Saturday morning cartoon style to it. On Indiegogo. Yeah, that's right. Glenn in Monsterland is on Indiegogo. Yeah, I should end with that. All right, that one's a 14th. That one's past. 16th. That one's passed. Oh, that's one I backed though, so I gotta put it over here. 19th, what day is it today? 19th, okay. So I don't know if this one is still up and running, but this is Stan Lee's Back Channel, Volume 1. Uh, so Stan Lee and creators Tom Akel and Andy Tong made a webtoons, or a webcomic and uh, called Back Channel. And uh, now that uh, the story's done and drawn and everything, it is, and it's been produced on the uh, online for you to read, now it's being produced into print. So if you want to get back channel in print right now, from Stan Lee, this has been in the works and online since 2015. And the story is about how when a child comes of age, they can realize that their parents aren't exactly as wonderful as they'd always thought they would have been. And so 
and how you reconcile with that. Also, superpowers and stuff. So this is going to be a 130 page hardcover. And there are cool pins. Uh, as you know, I collect pins. And there's a Stan Lee pin in there that I'd love to get my hands on. So check out Stan Lee's back channel, Volume 1. It ends today, May 19th. So, woof. I'll put that one in the uh, end. It's... Oh, man, this one ends today, too. Saturn Effect Alpha, number two, ends the second installment of A New Sci-Fi Journey, ends today. Um, this is one I'm backing. It is 27 pages of Aeon Flux-style art. So uh, it's kind of got a total recall feel to it, too. Uh, so they're way up in space. Um, it's called Saturn Effect Alpha. So I assume they're in, in orbit around Saturn. And uh, people are mining Saturn and getting whatever they need to make the rich people rich. And the rich people are living on space stations and kind of way removed from how bad it is on Saturn. Really crazy stuff. And I guess Saturn is affecting people, making them mutate. And the people that are, the miners are revolting. And uh, re the revolution starts a big old fight. Some of the space stations get bombed. Really cool stuff. It was a really fun read, like I said. It gave me vibes like Aeon Flux and Total Recall mixed together. So I was into it. I can't wait to get it. So since this is ending, Saturn Effect Alpha ends on May 19th. Pretty soon I should be getting the uh, Kickstarter survey. And that from there, I'll be getting it in my mailbox. So check it out. Saturn Effect Alpha on Kickstarter till May 19th today. Get on there today. Watch the video. Maybe even pause it, go back it, and then come back to the video if you have to. MC Lars's Fear of a Black Chain Planet. It's an album of uh, it's an album of songs about fatherhood, the pandemic, and late stage capitalism. His most personal album to date. MC Lars does some good stuff. Uh, it's one of my most favorite songs from MC Lars is Hot Topic is not punk rock. If you haven't heard that one, look it up. It's on, uh, it's on the YouTubes also, and uh, yeah, I love that song. It's really cool stuff. Um, he's got a really punk kind of metal vibe to him, to his sound. And uh, so check out MC Lars's Fear of a Black Planet, Black Chain Planet, is on Kickstarter till May 20th. That's tomorrow. That means if you don't back it now, you could miss out. Lovecraft PI is on Kickstarter. It's the curious case of the reanimer. Uh, the curious case of the reanimator hardcover in noir. This is going to be a black and white, inked and lettered pages, 114 page comic book hardcover. And uh, Detective Ward Lovecraft of the Miskatonic Supernatural Detective Agency is on the case in New Orleans about a mysterious cult that is trying to raise the mighty Cthulhu. Uh, I recently read the colored version of the curious case of the reanimator you can go through my uh shows to find that review and i enjoyed it um lovecraft pi i got introduced through the miskatonics they had a crossover and um i'm a fan now uh lovecraft pi takes place in the 30s and really good stuff um so do check out lovecraft pi the curious case of the reanimator noir hardcover edition on Kickstarter right now until May 21st. Infinity Agents 1 through 3 is an inter interstellar adventure with aliens, mechas, monsters, superheroes, and cosmic kaijus. And uh, this is from the creative team of, uh, oh, Ovation Comics and uh, John Schlim Jr., who, uh, John Schlim Jr. writes one of my favorite comics the uh, goth ghost girl so check out infinity agents one through three on kickstarter right now till may 27th this catonic high 11 is on kickstarter right now oh yeah man i forgot about that one uh miss catonic high 11 or miss catonic high period is one of my favorite comics to back and read um i'm never disappointed with their stuff i i could even be behind and uh like i could say Say I've got issue 9 in my read pile right now. It doesn't matter that this is issue 11, two away from what I've got now. I know I'm going to enjoy 11, and I'm back in it. So, uh, I, I don't know if I'm caught up yet, but 
Miskatonic High 11 is about the teens going back in time to the ancient time of the 1990s. But can they avoid a time stalker long enough to learn the secrets of their past? And from some of the uh, pictures I've seen on uh, the social medias, they've posted some pictures where one of the characters ends up in a Back to the Future kind of scenario where um, he's making out with his own mom. Hmm. So, yeah. Gotta love Miss Katonic High. So check out the teenagers enjoying the 1990s, and I think I saw a bunch of other times in there as well, like caveman times and them fighting with spears and stuff. So check out Miss Katonic High 11 on Kickstarter right now till May 27th. And get the catch-up tier if you're new to it. You will be happy with that you did. Um, yeah, I got a co-worker at work hooked on Miss Katonic High, so I always get two issues, one to give to him and one for myself. This time around, I'm getting the... Uh, Bill and Ted looking cover, two of them, because n normally I'd let him choose what cover and I'd take the leftover. Anyway, that's beside the point. On to the next book. Ananui, Anui Nui Warriors is about Hawaii's most, uh, okay, whoa. Let's start over there. Anui Nui Warriors, Hawaii is center stage in an epic one-shot. An origin story of the Mana Comics universe, which introduces a cosmic Ohana sent to battle the darkness of Earth. So, uh, Mana University is Hawaii's superheroes. They've been making comics since 2014, and uh, let's see, Amakua is one of the comics I've backed from them. Uh, Sister Star Shark is in that universe, and a lot of good stuff. Um, yeah, I kind of it's kind of like uh, the Salt City Strangers here in Utah, but the Hawaiian version. Um, so the characters we've got are Mother Mana, Brother Ula Ula, and Sister Alani, and Little Sister Brother Mele Mele, Sister Oma Oma O, and Brother Polu, Sister Uli Uli. And this is a 32-page story. Um, yeah. 32 pages of awesomeness. Uh, from what I've seen, it looks great. And, yeah, I'm a sucker for Hawaiian stuff. So, I love it. So, check out Anui Nui Warriors on Kickstarter till May 28th. Fever Volume 1 is on Kickstarter right now. Fever Volume 1 is an ongoing graphic novel tale of loss and revenge set against a cyberpunk American mega city. A hitman leaves the life and settles down with his daughter, with the daughter of a treacherous crime boss. So he marries a treacherous crime boss's daughter. They go away to try to live on a farm and uh, things go bad. And his wife gets killed. So his new bride is murdered on their honeymoon, and he, he embarks on a war against the entire criminal underworld because they ruined his life. The art is crazy kinetic. Love it. This takes place in 2082, so it's a cool future storyline going on, too. And it is a 120-page graphic novel. Love it. Uh, Fever looks awesome. Check it out. The art style will blow you away. And, uh, yeah. And is. It's got that uh, Keanu Reeves kind of John Wick feel to it, but it's taking place in the future. So check out Fever Volume 1 on Kickstarter till May 28th. Pneumatic Cases 1 through 3 is on Kickstarter right now. They are sleuthing steampunk spouses. Wow, that's a lot of S's. The third issue in a steampunk mystery comics miniseries. A story of dedication, seduction, death, and pistons. Lady Lord and Lady Ravencroft are two of two brilliant scientists and inventors whose bohemian lifestyle and inventive ways are in direct contrast with the staid and proper ways of Victorian England. This is a 22-page uh, story. Um, it has a Kaylin Smith cover on it. That's awesome stuff. There are stickers in the Kickstarter. Really cool stuff. Oh, Brant Fowler's in on this. Uh, I've backed some Brant Fowler stuff before. 
Last Ember Press. So check out Pneumatic Cases 1 through 3 on Kickstarter until May 30th. Alex Automatic Volume 1 is on Kickstarter. Now I've been interested in Alex Automatic for a while, and so when Volume 1 finally came around, uh, I'm glad that I actually had the funds and I'm able to back it this time. So check out Alex Automatic Volume 1 is driven mad by illegal, illegal government experiences, experiments. A young agent believes that he is a robot super spy hero from a 70s TV show, Alex Automatic. It's 220 pages. Holy cow, that's going to be a big volume. And it is Jack Kirby, Darwin Cook uh, kind of style to it. Really cool stuff. Um, so if you like Kirby, Darwin Cook, even Stephen Frank art, uh, Ditko, Alex Automatic is the book for you. It's got that classic look to it. And uh, I've seen some of the pages on it. Really cool stuff. And I can't wait to get my Alex Automatic Volume 1 on Kickstarter right now till May 30th. Obius Vampire Soldat. It's the preview that was in uh, my LaFay issue. So the Obius team are called to investigate a derelict hospital ship that is infested with bloodthirsty monsters. No Sleep Press. Uh, first issue of a two issue set. So it's only going to be a part one and two. This is Mature Readers. Do be warned. And OBS Vampire Soldat 1 is on Kickstarter right now. I'm uh, not on Kickstarter. OBS Vampire Soldat number 1 is on Indiegogo right now. So check that one out. I don't know how Indiegogo end dates work, so I'm just going to say it's on Indiegogo. Lethal Challengers Cat number 1 is on Indiegogo as well. A new, new sci-fi project from the writers of Le Fay and Babylon Working. Bounty hunters Cat and Tusk team up on a bounty that is more trouble than it's worth. So this is hand in hand with the uh, OBS creators. Um, really good stuff. Uh, I've got looking into it. It looks really good. So check out Lethal Challengers Cat number one on Kickstarter on Indiegogo right now. Sorry. That is really hard to get in the habit of saying Indiegogo. It is on Indiegogo right now till who knows when. Oh yeah, here's one of my favorites. Le Fay, number five is on Kickstarter. That is the comic that I just reviewed at the beginning of this show. Uh, Le Fay, as you know, is one of my favorites. Love her uh, private investigator, um, Jessica, uh, whatever. I can't remember now. I just lost it. I got dry mouth and lost track of what I've seen. Le Fay is on Kickstarter right now. Morgan Le Fay works as a PI for the occult underworld in modern times. You get issues 1 through 5 in this. 32 pages of this are in this issue alone. And uh, let's see. The first issue is free to read on Kickstarter. So check that one out. You will be hooked. It was good stuff. And uh, yeah, I think Jessica Jones, but if she... Uh, was a fairy and it's not like she flies around with her fairy wings because bad guy uh, ripped her wings off and cursed her so now Le Fay is dealing with all that really good story I'm hooked I can't wait to get Le Fay issue 5 added to my collection review that one and read that one so check out Le Fay number 5 on Kickstarter right now till June 2nd Starlight 1 through 3 that's the one that uh, I also reviewed at the beginning of this episode. So, Starlight 1 through 3 is on Kickstarter. Ravers, superheroes, all space travel, 24 pages of trans-dimensional spider wizards and space pirate cats, has-been superheroes, and a YouTuber reporter guy. Crazy stuff. Um, crazy artwork. Insane stuff going on. Starlight number one through three on Kickstarter until June 3rd. Now, section seven, Cases of the Strange and Unnatural is on Kickstarter right now. Explore a collection of case files based on experiences of detectives encountering the unexplained. 164 
pages of perfect bound graphic novel. Sketchy, loose art styles. I, I, I kind of I checked it out, and uh, the preview pages are awesome. It's right up there with if you're into Miskatonic stuff and X Files. So check out Section 7, Cases of the Strange and Unnatural, 164 page graphic novel on Kickstarter till June 3rd. Cuddles. A last chance crime story of an oversized crime one shot from the creative team behind Transmissions. This is 32 pages, 44 after bonus content. Great art style. Um, I, I checked out the uh, previews that they have uh, posted on the Kickstarter, and it looks awesome. And I've been seeing artwork posted on the uh, Twitters, and they look awesome as well. I love the main hero. He's kind of a really big guy, burly, plaid shirts and flannel and all that. And uh, yeah, looks like a good stuff, a good comic to get. Cuddles, right now on Kickstarter until June 6th. Ooh, here's one that I came across. The Deadliest Bouquet is on Kickstarter right now, and uh, it's in 1998, three estranged sisters, trained by their Nazi hunting mother, come together to solve their mother's murder. It's got uh, Corolla Borelli art, which uh, she's the artist on some Destiny New York stuff, and Love Universe, which are two things that I love backing and reading and her art style is insanely good and uh, I, she even uh, does some of the art, artwork for that OBS comic that I mentioned in the Kickstarter news. Anyway, so great preview. Uh, there's a couple pages of the comic on the Kickstarter page and uh, it looks awesome. I, as soon as I read those and knew who was drawing it and who was writing it, all this fun stuff, um, I jumped in on it. It's 120 pages, so that's that's a good good read. And uh, they've got stickers and pins, and uh, you know I'm the sucker for stickers. So check out Deadliest Bouquet on Kickstarter right now until June 15th. Oh yeah, and some of the names in this I only have the Twitter handles written down here, but Kevin Wada, James Bement, Gab Contreras, and Carola. Carola Barelli and Erica Schultz. So that's cool stuff. Um, I'm going to be reading an Erica Schultz comic pretty soon, tonight actually. Um, it's called Maybe Someday. That's one that I got in the mail a while ago, and it's on my to do list tonight. So I can't wait to read that. Check out Deadliest Bouquet on Kickstarter right now until June 15th. That's the end of my uh, notes right there. Uh, if you have a comic book, on Kickstarter or Indiegogo, please let me know about it so I can make add it to my notes and tell you about it in the next campaign corner. And uh, because uh, one of the, one of the best ways to get the word out on things that I find interesting is by telling you now. Sorry, I'm getting really awkward right now. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, uh, the the more I know about these, the better I can find comics that I'm interested in want to read so I love it when you guys uh, message me on the social medias and say hey check out my Kickstarter that's how I find most of these Kickstarters is through the emails of when uh, people I like back stuff and uh, when I see people post on the Twitters I see Kickstarters anyway tell me about your campaign I'll give you a shout out and uh, check out your comics and that's a wrap for that Yep, that's the end of my notes. Okay, put that aside. Now I'm going to be talking about something a little different. Uh, this is going to be new. So I'm going to be starting... Uh, I've had a Patreon uh, page for a couple of years now. Mostly I've just used it to uh, back certain people that I like following. And uh, anyway, so I've had a Patreon for a while. I don't know what to do with it. No idea what I'm even doing. As you can see from this YouTube, I barely know what I'm doing on YouTube. Anyway, so I finally figured out what I'm going to do with it, and uh, I'm going to start uploading 
this this video you're watching here I'm going to upload it to YouTube as well as Patreon and uh, that way if you're one of my Patreon followers you don't have to go to YouTube to watch this you can just watch it from your uh, Patreon and I'm gonna start uh, uploading progress on my comic book to the Patreon and uh, other stuff like that just random stuff so that you know how I get into making comics and whatever uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but uh, I make a Peter Pan the Vampire comic. That's what Renard Studios Comics makes. And so in my Peter Pan the Vampire, I, it's a little hard to make, to find time and stuff. But I'm working on it. And hopefully this motivates me to uh, put more effort and time into it. As my kids are getting older, it's going to be easier to get to make time on that. So I'm going to be starting a thank you section on my videos where I thank all of my Patreon viewers by name and shout out your social media handles. And uh, so each of my Patreons will give me the name that they want me to say, clean names only because I'm not going to say swear words and stuff, plus, so you give me your name plus two social media handles. and. Uh, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to, yeah, oh, yeah, okay, this is going to be getting easier as I do it long more. In addition to shoutouts, I will tag you in the uh, platform of your choice where I post the videos, and I will also post whips, behind the scenes stuff, I already said that, and maybe even do a giveaway now and then. Um, yeah, I'm thinking uh, after the first month of Patreoning, I will do a giveaway and for some Peter Pan the Vampire, the whole set. Ish, that's issues one through three, if you're not familiar with my work. And all that stuff. And I'm going to, whenever I get done publishing a book, so I'm working on issue four of Peter Pan the Vampire, I will have a thank you section for Patreon backers who are currently backing me the month that I end up finish my comic books. And I'm going to read every Patreon comment that is made on the Patreon site in this section of the video as well. Clean only though. So whatever you type, I'm going to say. If you have a question for me, I'm going to say it. If you have something to say like, man, you're, you're really dumb the way you trip over your words and stuff, I'll read that too. So here are just some examples. These are not people that are actually backing me right now, but I, I thought I'd give some shout outs to some of my favorite creators uh, and just show you the examples. So I'm going to read VIP members first. And starting with VIP members, I'm going to say Mike Shea, who uh, you can follow on Instagram and Twitter. Mike Shea is a v VIP member of Patreon, but as you know, that's just an example, not for real. Mike Shea, as you know, is a, uh, he's the creator of Miskatonic High, so do check out Mike Shea. Check out Mike Shea on these uh, Twitter handles and Instagram handles to find Miskatonic High. So, now I'm going to have gold members, which that's kind of funny to say because, you know, gold member. <laughs> so my gold member is Pat Shand. Pat Shand is a gold member. You can find Pat Shand on Twitter and Instagram at these ats. Uh, Pat Shand is the writer of a lot of comics I back. Um, Pat Shand writes Destiny New York, Prison Witch, and Smoke Weed, See the Future, spinoffs like that. And so I've got a lot of books coming. Might even have some books in my mailbox right now from Pat Shand. So check out Pat Shand, gold member, right now. Um, thank you to silver members. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these are just examples. Not actually people who are backing me on the Patreon, but as soon as I start getting real backers, I won't need the examples anymore. So, Charlie Stickney. Charlie Stickney is a silver member. You can find on Twitter and Instagram at these handles. Charlie Stickney uh, writes a comic called White Ash, 
which is amazing. If you're not reading White Ash, then you need to check it out, look it up, find it. And another silver member is Gary Brantner. As you know, that's me. Gary Brantner can be found on Twitter and on Facebook as Rentnarb Studios Comics. Gary Brantner is a silver member. So that's the end of that. Um, so hopefully, starting soon, I will have some uh, Patreon backers. Uh, the way it's going to work is uh, VIP. Let's see here. So my VIP members are going to be five in the five dollar tier. So if you give me five dollars a month, you're a VIP member. And gold members, let's see here. the gold member tier is going to be two dollars a month to be a gold member. And the silver member, let's see here. The silver member tier is going to be one dollar a month. So if, you, and I will read them in that order every time, VIP, gold, and silver. So uh, yeah, VIP five dollars a month, gold two dollars a month, and silver one dollar a month on Patreon. So go to Patreon, search for Rentnarb Studios or Gary Brantner. I'm not sure which I'm at under there. I will post links of that and uh, get this figured out. So, that brings me to the end of the show. Thank you for watching. Gary Brantner of Rentnarb Studios Comics. And thank you for listening to all these. I hope you look up every one of the comics I've mentioned because they are good ones. And follow me on Twitter so that you can find all the... Uh, I'm just going to post all the links to the Kickstarters there. And that make it really easy for you to find. And uh, I'm going to wrap it up right now. And thanks for watching Gary Branner of Renarb Studios Comics. Bye.